Excuse me for a moment while I get a cool drink from my Holy Yeti. Oh, that is so good. Why do I call it a Holy Yeti? Well, that's the story I'm going to tell you. But first, my name is Larry McKnight. I pastor a little church in Joyland. And I want to talk to you today, not about how much God loves you, but of course he does, but about the fact that he likes you. And I find a lot of people have a lot harder time thinking about God liking them because they know who they are, they know what they do, than they do thinking about the fact that he loves them. But before we get into the Yeti, I want to talk to you just about a couple people that God liked in spite of their lives. King David was amazing, had an amazing repertoire of things that he had done from killing Goliath to you name it. But come on, he made some horrible mistakes and committed some terrible sins. How about conspiring to kill his friend and steal his wife and then trying to cover it up with government authority? In spite of that, in spite of that, God himself said, this is a man after my own heart. And David was held up as a model for a long time to come. God was involved in all of his life in spite of the ugly stuff. The next person that I like talking about or thinking about when I talk about this kind of stuff is, is Abraham's wife, Sarah. If you'll remember in Genesis, we get all the blow-by-blow -blow details of the story. The Lord appeared to Abraham, was promising he and Sarah that they would have a child early that next year or the same time that next year. And when Abraham took the happy news into his wife, what did she do? She laughed. She mocked. Then when the Lord himself called her on it, she lied. Wow. Now, a little bit later, as she realized that the process really was going forward, she began to manipulate this situation. She took Hagar, her handmaiden, and gave, it, gave her to Abraham as a, uh, as a concubine. And when the poor woman conceived and bore a son, Sarah treated her abominably. She sent her ultimately out into the desert to die. And yet with all of that unbelief, the mockery, the laughing, even lying to the face of the Lord and the, the way she treated Hagar, when it comes to the record of her from God's heart to ours, when God wrote about her, he said, and Sarah believed God and had a son. Come on. Peter's another one. Peter loved Jesus. There's no doubt about it. And Jesus loved Peter. But the day that Jesus was arrested and crucified, Peter's faith and loyalty collapsed like a house of cards. Under threat of accusation from a little girl and the fear of the law, he denied Jesus with cursing and walked away, weeping bitterly and ashamed. But look at what happened. You don't see it in the Gospels, but you do see it under the revelation of the Holy Spirit and Paul when he's talking about Jesus' resurrection and then moves into the celebration of his death. He says, when Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared first to Peter. What? Like I say, you don't read it in the Gospels. I think that the Holy Spirit just kind of kept it secret because it was a personal, private encounter by the Master with his disciple and by Jesus with his friend where he healed the, the brokenness of Peter's heart and delivered him from shame. And as you know, Peter went on to be a lion in the birthing of the church. So these folks illustrate to me that God not only operates in some kind of transcendental way, some kind of big, huge, redemptive way where he loves us and he sent his son, but he delights to be a part of the details of your life. I want to encourage you through my little story on the Yeti and the examples of David and Sarah and Peter to, to invite the Lord, recognize the Lord, look for the Lord to be in the details of your everyday life. He sees you. He knows you. He sees every single thing you do. A lot of people, that makes them nervous. It shouldn't. It's a sign that he is with us and that we have a friend in the Godhead that knows our hearts and loves the details of this life that we live. He shared it with us. He has memories of it. So here's what happened with the Yeti. Okay, so here's here's my Yeti. I, I won this. There, you can still see the logo. That's a Young Life logo. I won this in a golf tournament, a fundraising golf tournament, many years ago, several years ago. And uh, I loved it. And it's the nicest kind of tumbler thing I'd ever had. And it just keeps ice in it for a really, really long time. I suppose it keeps hot drinks too, but I mostly drink water. But anyway, this thing really transformed my life because I, I started carrying water with me everywhere. And it was just always so nice. Excuse me, I'm going to take another sip. Mm. Ice cold. 
it was always so nice to have that refreshing water that I cut way, way back on my soda drinking and other stuff that I would be drinking, like coffee or anything like that. I started losing weight, and ultimately I lost about 30 pounds. Really, I didn't change a single thing in my life except just drinking this and carrying it with me. And um, it was just amazing. I, I even started kind of getting some grief from my friends. You know, you're always carrying that thing. or da, da, da. And I even had a little bag that I threw over my shoulder and carried it in. Then one day I lost it. I had no idea where it was. I had no idea. My wife and I scoured the house. We looked all over the place. We tore the garage apart. Of course, we looked in the cars. We looked under the seats. Down at church, I looked everywhere. I had other people helping me. It just was nowhere to be found. And eventually, I just sort of reconciled myself that I'd probably done something, you know, sort of stupid and like set it on the top of your car and then you forget to pull it in and drive away and it hung on there for a while and then it fell off. Whatever it was, it was gone. And I was grieved over it. Um, because I just loved this thing. I was almost like obsessed with it. So I, I started using whatever else I had in the house or having a bottle of water, but it never had that, that taste that can only come from being sitting there in the ice that, that these insulated Yetis are just so amazing about. So anyway, flash forward a little bit, and it had now been several months that I'd lost this thing. And I was on the verge of going to my very first trip to Africa. And I was going to go to Uganda, uh, which I did last September. I was going to go to Uganda. I was going to minister to these guys and, and the gals over there. And we just have a great relationship with a bunch of young people. And I was missing my Yeti. So I went down to Walmart. I was going to buy a container because I needed something like this to manage my purified drinking water during the day and various things like that. So uh, I stand in front of all the mugs and the, the water bottles and stuff. And I just got, I just got bummed because I missed my Yeti. Lost my heart to shop. I walked out to my car, and I'd like to say that I put up some kind of real faith-filled prayer or something, but I didn't. I just put my hands on the steering wheel, my head down, and I just started whining. I go, oh, Papa, I just missed that Yeti so much. I'm just so frustrated that I lost it. How stupid would that be? You know, I just miss that so much. I finally got control of myself and quit blubbering at my misfortune. I drove home. All right, So, but I'd lost the heart to shop for sure. About three days later, we had two friends come up, a mine named Ronnie and Sonny, and uh, they were going to have lunch on the weekend because I was leaving the next Tuesday and wouldn't see them for about a month or so. So they come up. I had the rest of my family here, my wife, my uh, daughter, son-in-law, my grandson, and we had a nice lunch, had fellowship. And then they left, and I went out to say goodbye because I was going to be gone for a little over a month. And I didn't know what was going on. And so um, as soon as we said goodbye, I came back in the house, and my wife said, I see you found your Yeti. I go, What? She goes, yeah, it's sitting right in there in the kitchen. I look around the corner, and sure enough, this thing is sitting, boom, right next to the coffee maker on the counter. I was stunned. I ran outside real quick because I thought, you know, something, they had something to do with it. And I said, guys, did, did I leave my Yeti in your car? And they go, well, I don't know. Well, look. And I go, no, no, I don't mean that. I mean, like, months and months ago when I lost it, did I leave it in your car? And they go, no. I go, you didn't bring it up today? No. You didn't stick it in the kitchen? No. What are you talking about? I go, well, my Yeti's back in there. I go, I got to go. I got to talk to my family. So they took off. I went back in the house, and I just was grilling every, everybody at the table. Did you guys find it? I mean, it's cool. It's a blessing. I love it. But did you find it? No. No, we thought you did. So I look over there, and here it is. The Holy Yeti. Of course, I didn't know it was holy yet. What happened next is why that name got attached to it. I walk in the kitchen. And I was just like I walked into a wall of God's presence. The hair on my arms was standing up. Tears started to form in my eyes. And I looked down and I picked this thing up and I realized a few moments ago, however we could explain this, this Yeti tumbler was in the hands of Jesus as he reached out and set it down on my counter. Oh! I was undone. It was a kiss from my father. It was a gift from Jesus. It was awesome. It was awesome. So two days later, I'm on my way to um, I'm on my way to Uganda. This is tucked safely away in my uh, carrying bag, and I, I almost thought, oh my gosh, I've got this miraculous thing going. I don't want to lose it, but I took it with me anyway. And I had put the story on Facebook about all this happened, and so the guys in Uganda and gals they knew, and everybody wanted to see it. And everybody wanted to have communion from it because I told them that's what we were going to do. We're going to take the Yeti that Jesus touched and we're going to celebrate his death and resurrection. And we had some amazingly wonderful times. So how important is me having this Yeti bag? 
in the overall scheme of things, it's not very important. But it was important enough to my father to dig into that little part of my life to create both a blessing and an awareness that he knows about the details of my life. And that's what I want to leave you with. I want to leave you with the thought to take more seriously the fact, not just that God loves you, but that he likes you, that he is involved in your life. Jesus lives in our hearts. And he did say to his disciples and through them to us, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. You and I have a friend in the Godhead who cares about the details of our life. And the more we ponder it, the more we realize how intimate a friendship and how deep a fellowship we can have with God. So I, I commend you to that thought. If you'd like to hear more, you can look for joylandlife.com right over here.